Yes, Alex? Let me tell you about Vindaman. I've swapped complete failure as a Kickstarter. Star Fox Command is the first game that you get to be Anthony Birch. The first of many fuck yous. Like a fucking Looney Tunes? Um, 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 stipulation was behave yourself and keep your dick in your pants and you have not followed through on that hey alex yes tad let me tell you about pewdiepie the biggest face turn in youtube history alex it's 2018 a cartoon villain from a shitty 80s animated kid series is president cloud and mega man are in smash bros Dragon Ball Z got not just a new anime, but also an actual fighting game, and I'm unironically watching PewDiePie videos. What a fucking topsy-turvy, upside-down world we live in. Now, Alex, what do you know about PewDiePie? You know, uh, PewDiePie! What, what do you know about us as we call ourselves bros? Well, bros, I know that he's, like, Swedish, right? Yep. He's really, 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 really fucking popular, like... Super popular. And I'll hang on. I gotta go do chores real quick. Alright, I'm back. <laughs> and he was in South Park. Okay. Now, so his name is uh, Felix Shelberg. And Alex, I'm gonna give you 16 tries on how to spell his last name. Shelberg? His, his name is Felix Shelberg. How do you spell his last name? Oh, Shelberg, no G. Shelberg, with a G at the end. Okay, uh... S. Wrong. C. Damn it. C. <laughs> Wrong. Z. <laughs> Wrong. It's K J E L L B E R G. Because he's Swedish. Yeah, but the the J is a Y sound, not a F sound. Nope. I heard it in a YouTube video, so I'm going with it. So, uh, PewDiePie started on YouTube back in about 2010, 2011. He, uh, so, so 2010 YouTube was a very different place. Some music videos were, like, on there. It was starting to, like, because that was, 2010 was, like, the end of MySpace. That's when people would still, like, have a MySpace page, and Facebook was just starting, Twitter was just starting, shit like that. So you had, uh, stuff like the Angry Video Game Nerd was very, very new. You had Smosh. So... You basically had, for for your high-level YouTube, you had game critics, and then, you know, AVGN ripoffs, like the irate nerd, or whatever. It's the irate gamer. Same bullshit. And then you had sketch comedy. Let's Plays weren't... They were a thing as early as, like, 2006, I think? 2000, uh, 2002 or 2004... Uh, Chris Chan did the first Let's Play because he recorded, like, six hours of... If Joe was here, he'd probably be able to give me an exact fucking, like, time stamp. But he recorded that and he sent it into Nintendo Power, I think. And they, like, published it in the... It, it was weird. But that was, you know, that was, that was 2010 YouTube. Uh, so 2011, uh, he was going to college... And he didn't get in uh, for a marketing position. I believe it was a marketing position. And so he dropped out of college. Because he's like, you know what? This fucking sucks. Like, I, I hate this. I hate being here. This blows. So what he was doing most of the time is he was actually doing, like, this Photoshop stuff. He was making these really nice Photoshop images. And his parents told him to fuck off after he dropped out of college. They wouldn't support him. So he started working at a hot dog stand right outside of his college that he trapped out of. Nice. So he would see, like, his classmates that were still in there would go out and he'd be wearing, like, a silly hat selling hot dogs outside. And you know that there was someone who's like, oh, so this is where you ended up. Oh, you know. And then five years later, he's making $12 million a year making YouTube videos. But... So what he did is, um... That was when he first started making videos, because he was just bored. You know, he was doing his Photoshop stuff. He was selling them good, good hot dogs. It was good, good Swedish Ikea hot dogs. And so he just... I think his first video was called Minecraft Multiplayer Fun. It was just him and a few friends. No face cam. Just playing Minecraft. And so, uh, 2011, he started doing more videos. 
And about 2012 was when he really fucking bumped up in popularity. Because this is when he started doing the survival horror game Let's Plays. So he he started doing um, higher, like very high quality, higher quality video editing where he would have the words pop up on the screen, the face cam that looked like it was in like a box and all that. It was capitalizing on memes, doing fucking meme rage faces, loud yeah. yelling, screaming. Did he have his catchphrase yet? Uh, the one was like, Peter Pie! And then just yeah, like, yeah, the yeah. Fa- the, like the bro fist thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he kind of, st- those were like, I think it originated from like a kind of like the, like a, a melting pot of like 4chan culture and like internet forums, something awful, stuff like that. And so he kind of took a few of those aspects and then put him into his videos because those were things that he himself was just doing. Just just the, just things that he was a part of, so he kind of took them as, like, I guess his quote-unquote brand. But that's when these videos started coming out. And those videos themselves, they were, they were pretty popular, pretty good. But what was really getting, um, what was really getting big were those, he would make these, like, top 10 compilation of PewDiePie scary moments with funny subtitles and that's where shit got real. That's where he uploaded all of his best content in an easy to digest form. Yeah, he started uh, putting them all up there and you would see in the corner, you know, you'd see uh, here's here's a guy making a funny face bright bright thumbnail blah 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 blah. Of course, a lot of that also came from Smosh. Because Smosh, I would say they were like the first big-time YouTube stuff. Uh, <clears throat> so he hit 1 million subscribers in about July 2012. And then pretty fucking quickly got to... I th- Currently he's... And I had to update this three fucking times as I was doing the research for this episode. Now he's at 63 million. Holy moly. Holy moly guacamole. Uh, So continuing on from there, in 2014, he uh, got his first kind of major sponsorship, and that was uh, Warner Bros. And Warner Bros. paid him to play Shadow of Mordor. And there was actually kind of a big deal about this, because they had had a few other big-name YouTubers do it, but they didn't, like, give them a guideline. And Warner Bros. got in big trouble... Because they were sponsoring all these people, but not letting them know that they had to say it outright. That it was sponsored content, or they were breaking some kind of, like, guidelines and a bunch of crazy shit. Uh, so, so, 2014 is when, like, he first started getting involved in these kind of scandals. And, and he was actually, like, the safest of all the ones, because he put it in the description that it was a sponsored video, because he wasn't sure, and he wanted to put it up there. But, uh... So PewDiePie started making all these videos where he was, um, and he, he reflected on these later on in like 2017, where he was saying crude, offensive things, uh, being very loud, being very explosive, making humor where there wasn't any to be found, and generally just being, uh, like, go back and watch some of the early YouTube videos you used to watch. And chances are they're going to be one of two things. One, they're going to be Super Mario Bros. Z and be really fucking lame. Or two, they're going to be the other side of that Newgrounds Flash coin and be like super edgy dumb shit like Pico's school. So th- that that's what he was doing for a long while. And that's what really got him popular were these big annoying things. Because they were in your face, they were loud... And he set the framework for pretty much every big YouTuber after that that's involved in video games. If you look at, uh, I- I'm trying to think of a-, a big video game based YouTuber that didn't like copy what he did. He was the angry video game nerd of loud screaming people. He 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 kind of pioneered. Uh, it's dumb as this. He, he kind of it's as dumb as this, uh, this uh, sounds to say. He pioneered the little box, you know, the, the, the face cam almost. Mm-hmm. He pioneered uh, trying to make a stupid forest catchphrase and a shitty tagline for your fans to attach themselves as an identity to. Mm-hmm. So, uh, back to 2014. So we had that thing happen with Warner Bros. And then there was an article 
uh, that came out showing uh, PewDiePie YouTuber makes $8 million in 2014. <laughs> and a lot of people got really fucking butthurt about that. So now people understand YouTube a bit more as a platform for videos and shit. As, as a platform for, like, actual serious entertainment stuff. But this was kind of a... This was a lot of... Because this was a big name. Uh, you know, this, this was a big deal. Because this is the first time people saw that much money publicly stated. Because even YouTube itself tells people who get up there to not talk about how much money you make. Because it doesn't really... It, it doesn't contribute to anything. It just makes people get butt hurt. I don't think jealous is the right word for it. But people no, get, but like... Would... It'll make them less creative because they'll be like, if I just copy him, I'll make $8 million too. I'm sure that's part of it, but it, it's something that when people hear about it, they like he, in, in the video he made about it, he was pointing out a bunch of different comments and people are just like, oh, well, I can put on like a dress and scream into my microphone for two hours and make that much money too. And it, it causes people to get really butthurt and disregard yeah, stuff they make. Uh, but <clears throat> so he was getting all this and here's, here's my favorite little, uh, my favorite little, uh, clip from this. This is from a guy whose name was Matthew Ingram. Uh, this is just a temper tantrum by a man baby who makes millions of dollars playing video games. Uh, at first glance, the video in which he threatens to delete his channel seems like the whining of a rich, entitled celebrity who has noticed that his videos aren't getting as many views as they used to and blames the platform for not supporting him as much as they think they should. This is from one joke he made some like after that came out about how he would delete his channel if it got 50 million subscribers. And this dude got so fucking butthurt, he was flailing around calling him a man baby because the whole point of the video... Was him jokingly saying he was going like, no one cares about me. You know, like, ah, I'm going to, you know, they don't, they don't treat me right. So I'm going to delete my channel. And then he made like, he's friends with this guy, a uh, Jack septic guy. He's the green hair guy. You know, he, he colors his hair green. So it shows up in YouTube thumbnails. I have no idea what he makes. Uh, probably the same stuff as PewDiePie that they, they all fucking Jack septic guy, Toby Turner, uh, Markiplier, um, the guy who only plays Binding of Isaac, they all fucking blend together into the same thing. I have, like, no idea who any of them are except for Markiplier, and I don't actually know what Markiplier does. I just know two things about him. One, that stupid joke I saw on Tumblr once, which was, uh, Hey, it's me, your husband, Markiplier. You've been in a coma for six years. It's time to wake up. <laughs> and then that stupid fucking uh, source filmmaker thing about the Native American story and the history of America... Read by Markiplier, which is like actually really funny. There, there's, there's something that uh, there's something about YouTubers because this was something that I was really wondering for a while, and that is why do videos of uh, these gaming things why why are these so popular? I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you do, Alex. But um, so this is my this is my theory parentheses game theory and parentheses I'm Matt Pat I fall into the same into the same genre of people I'm talking about Matt Pat Matthew Matthew and I think it's because if I am watching a TV show if I'm watching Disney Channel or some dumb shit you know Disney or if I'm watching Nickelodeon's Dan Schneider Power Hour <laughs> if I see someone on that TV there is a disconnect of me the TV this person i know that that person is like quote unquote in hollywood doing hollywood stuff if there's me my computer screen my computer screen and pewdiepie telling me to put my bro fist into the computer as he's looking directly at me it feels like we're closer and i can't think of a better comment to capture that than on a random video this kid who's like eight years old commenting be right back pewdiepie i gotta do my chores and then immediately after that okay i'm back <laughs> okay another thing to actually add to yours is uh what you're talking about like you, you see that person you see that you're there in uh they're hollywood doing hollywood things 
when you go and see PewDiePie, uh, when you're sitting in your chair on your computer screen, you see PewDiePie sitting on his chair looking at his computer screen at you or at the game. He's doing the same thing you are so you can connect with him a little bit e easier. Exactly. And then there's also, uh, when you're watching a YouTube video, the person's talking directly to, quote unquote, you. They're talking to the audience. S most YouTubers, some of the very, very top ones are like, they they have people who uh pay who are paid to like do their makeup and the uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm stumbling over my words here because I got all this stuff all this word vomit on my notepad document something like the McElroy brothers they fall into this um this level at like the highest level of podcasting where they have personality consultants and things like that. That once I heard about that, my enjoyment of their podcast kind of went downhill a bit because now when, when they're when they're goofing and doing their stuff, I, rem I I have in the back of my mind they are being coached by a company that's paid to make sure that they always look good or are always doing like a proper thing, and you don't really have that. For the majority of big YouTuber people, you, they don't have suits that are standing over them telling them, hey, you have to do things like this or you have to do things like that. Some of them, you know, some of them do like the, the, the react people, I believe, do. Um, and this kind of ties into uh, Disney had a hand in these uh, big YouTuber names, because if you're a big person on YouTube, the people who use YouTube are between the ages of for, for the most part between the ages of like 15 to 23 between those two age ranges that's where the vast the vast amount of people are and as a advertiser that's really fucking hard to appeal to especially now because alex do you have a cable subscription <laughs> that's a good one squidward i don't have a the literally the only people i know who have a cable subscription are above the age of 45 do you have a newspaper subscription alex Come on, even old people don't have those, Dad. My grandma can't give away. She gets a bunch of uh, free subscriptions, and she can't. She literally can't give them away enough people. She tried giving me them, but I'm like, Grandma, I, I cannot do anything with this newspaper. I don't have a like a puppy to train. I don't like do arts and crafts. I have no purpose for this. I could read Garfield comics on Garfield.net. Jim Davis, read... America's favorite hero. I can read Dilbert comics on the Dilbert app. Yo, do you know what the dude who makes Dilbert is like a super misogynist? I mean, aren't we all, Tad? Oh, 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 oh. But yeah, so these people, uh, Disney reached in there and it was called Maker Studios. And PewDiePie was like really early put in there. Back in, I, I want to say as early as 2012. So pretty, like once he started getting really big. Disney hopped in and was like, hey, you want uh, you want you want to join the mouse here? He was like, yeah, sure, fuck it. So uh, he was a big part of them for a long while. Until, uh, so 2016, this is when PewDiePie started his anime redemption arc. So 2016, <laughs> he starts making goofs. Uh, he jokes on Twitter about joining ISIS in regards to the hoops you have to jump through to get verified on Twitter. Where he's like... I can't, you know, I've gone through all this shit for Twitter, and I can't get verified, but what if I say I'm joining ISIS, I'm sure they'll pay attention to my account. Immediately gets his account suspended. <laughs> uh, also, side note, he got kicked out of two apartments in 2016 because he was too loud. I thought that was funny. He got kicked out of one in, like, Sweden, and then one some other country. Because he kept screaming and making his videos and just being generally obnoxious. Well, how does he not have a house with all that money? Uh, why buy a house? Why do I have to spend that much money, Alex? Well, I mean, not being able to getting kicked out is a pretty nice fucking upside to owning the house. I think he, um, I think he bought a studio that one of his friends or one of the, one of his like business people owned. I think he lives there now. Alrighty. But so 2016, he started like going through some of this, some of this more silly shit. Uh, and the 2000, so late 2016, and about most of 2017 is where shit starts getting real. 
he's playing Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and he drops a hard R. Nice. So he's in, he's in the middle of just a game. He just goes, "Oh man, that guy's such an N word." Oh shit! And he just tries his best to play off it, and not react, and not just like fuck. You can look at his eyes and seems like oh sh- shit. And then his buddy, ooh man, his friend keeps bringing it up for the rest of the stream. Nice. Oh, I would. I mean, Ted, if you were famous, I'd fuck with you every chance I could get. <laughs> Basic. Like, I don't blame you. But he, you know, he apologizes. Like, that wasn't okay. I probably shouldn't have done that. That was, you know, I, I don't. He, he, uh, a, a bunch of mainstream media news outlets immediately jumped on him, calling him like a racist, uh, bigot. Obviously. Uh, free clicks. Immediately. Free use. And so he's like, I'm sorry. I, that was fucked up. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, yeah, there was, like, no way he could have escaped that one. Like, he, you fucked up on that one. So he, uh, he apologized for that. And then that one really wasn't that big a deal. It was, like, it was like, hey, you shouldn't have done that, but no one really cared that much. It came and went. Yeah, it just happened, and then that was pretty much it. That was over. Later on in 2017, he does, he had a, a few videos on Fiverr. Now, Fiverr is a website where you can pay... It's a freelancing website where people are just like, hey, if you give me $5, I'll do whatever you want. And so he was just going doing goofy videos with it. Uh, you know Tyrone? Those yes. Tyrone videos? That, that That's what it is. It's mm-hmm, just shit like mm-hmm. that. I know. He was pointing out how silly all this uh, Fiverr stuff was. Like, he had a video where he had a guy, he, he paid him $5, the guy was dressed up as Jesus. Like, hey, everyone, Jesus here. And I just want to let you know, Hitler did absolutely nothing wrong. So long. <laughs> and just it's just silly shit like that. <laughs> so then what he did is he there was like these two Indian kids that were just going ah ha 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 oh, oh, oh acting like goddamn Xavier Renegade Angel models. <laughs> One of oh, them like I tosses he tosses open like he hands them like a piece of paper. He opens it up. Death to all Jews. Subscribe to Keemstar. Yeah, and it's, yeah, I it's seen pretty them. good. And that's just like, okay, it's a funny joke, right? Just, okay, yeah, Death to All Jews. Ha 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 ha. Subscribe to Keemstar. For those who don't know, Keemstar is like this guy on YouTube who just, he's like TMZ for YouTube and no one likes him because he doesn't actually make anything of his own. He just does, you. he leeches off of other YouTube people to make his own income. It's like the fucking, it, it's as low effort as the fine bros reaction videos. Yeah. But so, so this joke with Fiverr did not go over well. It really did not go over well. So, uh, wall street journal went really fucking hard on this on him. So wall street journal is a news organization that is like, an actual news organization. If I saw a article from Wall Street Journal, I would be like, okay, you know what? That probably is a real article. That's probably well researched. So what they did is um they took that and then they took a bunch of other clips from his videos. One in which he um got a haircut and his haircut was blonde and like sweep to the side. And uh he was doing a joke where he was like Pretending to be a um, a teen pop idol thing, like holding his hand out, doing like a Nazi salute, like having a Nazi thing, and then changing it to a bunch of screaming teen girls, and then that was like the end of the joke. Because the joke was that he would have leg- my legions of my legions of little girl followers, and then that was like the end of the joke. And he just moved on. Uh, a follow up video to when he dropped the N word where he was, like, reading an article that called him, like, a racist Nazi, and then he just, like, it faded out to him in, like, an like a, like a Nazi uniform cap and gown just, like, standing there stroking his beard, looking very straight, like, just looking straight forward, nodding, going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, like, yeah, on his exactly screen is just, that. like, Hitler doing a bunch of shit. And so the Wall Street Journal takes a bunch of these out-of-context jokes, and instead of going to PewDiePie for content went to his sponsors. They went to Disney. They went to, uh, I think there was two or three other ones. 
Wait, Disney, Disney was, was still spon- Wait, hold on, hold on. Sorry. Yeah, he sorry. was sponsored by... Disney didn't care that much that he... Because the end... When he dropped the N-word, it wasn't that big a deal. No one really cared. Anyone who actually watched the video knew that, like, okay, that was a bad thing, whatever. But that... There was never any big blow-up before this. But Wall Street Journal went to Disney and was like, hey, Disney, look at, look at all these out-of-context jokes that PewDiePie made. And they did that so that they could then make an article with the headline... Disney drops uh, PewDiePie. Disney cuts ties with YouTuber superstar PewDiePie. And to actually read that article, Alex, you have to log in, create an account, and subscribe to their newspaper. But oh, goddamn, isn't that a real fucking eye-catching headline? This was like the the first major uh, bullshit point for him because he had to do because he had because a bunch of other news articles would take this Wall Street Journal one and then report off of it. And then propagated that way. So Disney dropped him. The the Maker Studios dropped him. YouTube canceled his YouTube Red show, which is called Scare PewDiePie, which is just like you know, like Ghost Hunters show where or like Ghost Punchers or whatever the fuck, where it's like, hey, what's up, ghosts? It's me, your boy, and the guy who just like doesn't like ghosts and is just a fucking douchebag to him. It, it was basically PewDiePie in a Ghost Hunters show where they take him hey. to spooky areas. <laughs> no <laughs> okay well that's a good show it's on the travel channel it's about this guy it they they know that ghost hunting shows are total horse shit and so they just play up like different archetypes like it's fucking scooby-doo i love it it's really good the guy just goes in there's like all right hey ghost you fucking bitch why don't you come out and show yourself huh too fucking scared it it's really good alex so you had Wall Street Journal taking this to all of his sponsors to get that to get that clickbait headline. You had Vox Media, Vice, all these people were calling PewDiePie this alt right uh, Nazi, taking all these jokes out of context. And and and, and I mentioned this uh, in one of the Noise Boys, I think, um, the Campo Santo guy, the guy who made Firewatch, he got wind of all this and was like. You know, I'm tired of this man-child making money off of something that we made, blah, 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 crying baby noises. And he's like, I'm going to copyright strike all of his, fi- uh, you know, I'm going to copyright his, uh, you know, all of his channel with stuff related to us, which, again, don't, you should not try to utilize copyright strikes as a weapon just because you don't like what someone did six months after he uploaded your videos. Don't be a bitch. But, uh... There was a bunch of stuff. The, everything just kind of fell apart after that. Uh, Revel Mode, which was the company, there's a company slash group that PewDiePie formed with a bunch of other big name YouTuber people called Revel Mode. Uh, that got disbanded because Maker Studios didn't want anything to do with them anymore. Disney didn't want anything to do with them. Uh, also, side note: Did you like know Disney once sponsored Insane Clown Posse? Why? That's a. I don't know. Were they in, like, a movie cameo or something? No, but, like, Disney owns so many, like, smaller companies that you wouldn't know it's Disney unless you looked it up. But they owned a record company. Disney owns a record company, and they they, they had fucking insane cloud posse on there. But uh, he had to go through all this. He had to make a lot of videos talking about it. There was, um, he's friends with H3H3, those dudes. And one of those guys made a video uh, where he was talking about People were getting upset saying, uh, oh, you know, PewDiePie is this, you know, he's this fucking Nazi. He hates Jews. How can he be friends with them? He's like, I've known this dude for six to, you know, like six fucking years. And this is total horse shit. They're taking all this stuff out of context. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, mid to big, like, YouTuber people were coming to his defense. And this is when I, because before this point, I didn't give a shit about PewDiePie. I just knew him as screamy, uh basis for all these bad videos on youtube and this is like everyone started coming to his defense like hey this is total bullshit uh you know fuck off with all this and so it slowly over time just kind of stopped being as prevalent people eventually got over it once they realized oh this is total bullshit and so but that's not the end of it so there's another thing that happened pretty recently like three weeks ago maybe so there was a video he made where he had this like Toby eye tracking where it would show on the screen where his eyes were looking 
And then he was just watching a bunch of random YouTube videos. And one of them was like Twitch fails compilations. And it was just a bunch of Twitch girls. And he was watching, he was watching one just like, ah, stop, stop, you Twitch thought. And then there's this girl named Alinity. And uh, so she, she's, she's a, she's a Twitch titty streamer. That's all she is. She's one of those, one of those girls who realize that they can go on to Twitch and make a lot of money off of people who are prepubescent kids who don't, people who like video games and like girls, but don't want to give up one of them for the other, you know? (laughs) So she's one of those people who realize I can make a lot of money very easily this way. But also, like, pretend that I'm not just a Twitch thought. And so it was a bunch of videos of, like, her. Like, she would get a subscriber and, like, stand up and, like, go over and, like, p- like pants that are, like, fucking four inches long. Oh, and, like, I know bending. this chick. You know. You know. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, know. So in the video, she's, like, holding a bowl of spaghetti in one hand and is watching it. And when he just says, like, don't, ah, ah, you Twitch thought. She's like, oh. Can, I pop, can we copyright strike PewDiePie for that? Can we copyright strike him? Can we take that video down? And uh, so she copyright strike the video because he called her a Twitch thought. Not even I her love, specifically. By, by the way, can I just say, I love that they're just using copyright strike as a fucking weapon and they still haven't changed this stupid system yet. Nah, fuck it. It works just fine. Whatever. YouTube is a black fucking hole for Google, dude. It makes them no money. I don't know how they... Because Twitch, YouTube ads aren't... Because remember, if you're using YouTube, it's 100% free. If you want to upload your 17-hour compilation video of you doing absolutely nothing, that's YouTube's bandwidth that you're eating. Nothing from your end. Maybe your internet connection to get it up there, but YouTube has to host all this fucking trash, and the ads can't be bringing in enough money. The only way I could even see them getting somewhat close to even is selling all of my information, which, fucking whatever. You're gonna find out that I like PewDiePie now, YouTube. Whatever, I don't give you shit. Uh, <coughs> so Alinity put a bunch of copyright strikes out, tried to like get a whole bunch of his videos, and so this started yet another fucking another fucking YouTube drama bullshit cycle. She put out in her videos there that uh, she was on her stream. And she mentioned that the company that uh, she's a part of gives her $700 whenever she copyright strikes a video and just straight up admits there's a monetary gain for her to to copyright strike videos if they go through, she gets money for free. Wait, why? Because it's it's something with how the company is set up that they they must work for like a sub-company of a sub-company for some larger company that doesn't want videos up there that cop that infringe on their copyright that, you know, quote unquote, steal money from them. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with the video he made. There was no copyright infringement done, but it was taken down anyway. And so this started like this whole back and forth thing. Like PewDiePie was like, Oh, okay. We're going through this again. Oh Jesus. Here we go. He was like, okay, I, I shouldn't have called you a Twitch thought. That was actually not okay. Cause that is an insult. That is, you know, degrading towards women. I, I shouldn't have done that. And then he's like, but also, whoop. And so Alinity took this whole situation, the whole fucking reason she went through this, she didn't care that he was calling her Twitch that. She doesn't give a fuck. The reason why was because easy free money and I get to leech off of PewDiePie's name for those sick, sick clickbaits. So she does all these interviews with uh, Kotaku and a few others, uh, let me see if I can find the, uh, there it is. So Vice News uh, published an article, which has a really, f- like, they put Wall Street Journal to shame with this one. PewDiePie is teaching his audience that women are asking for it. Oh, ho, ho. talk about a fucking you. <laughs> that's, that's all, that's all modern journalism is, Alex. It's getting free yous. God, I hate everything, Dad. So, in, 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 this, in this whole thing, so... PewDiePie didn't tell his fans to, like, sick him or anything like that. He did retweet a video on Twitter, though, which is her admitting to, uh... She's from, like, Colombia, and she moved to Canada. Oh, yeah, 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 So she moved to Canada and married this guy and then divorced him after a year, 
which is just straight up marriage fraud. Just straight up, like, you could get deported over that. And so it caused this whole fucking back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And once again, after getting context and not just falling, not falling for the clickbait of PewDiePie saying, PewDiePie says all women should be raped. You know, not falling for that bullshit. A bunch of people came to his defense and end of the day, oh, then he got a lot of free money out of it. Uh, it doesn't matter if people think she's a dumb Twitch thought because she knows she is. And she does she's fucking making free money off all this. Who gives a shit? Careful, Tim. You might get copyright strike for that. I don't give a fuck. Try and copyright strike me. Pussy won't. Copy- copyright Pussilanimous these nuts. <laughs> copyright strike this dick. Oh, uh, but yeah, so PewDiePie now, unironically, what the fuck? I love PewDiePie now. So around 2016, he had all this shit going on. He's like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm done. I'm done censoring myself. I'm done putting on my um putting on my video game or whoa, hey guys, whoa screaming. He was like, I'm done with that. I'm it's over. I ain't doing it anymore. So now his videos, he has a subreddit where people could submit stuff to him and he just kind of goes through it. Uh, he does a lot of, uh, his most recent video as of today was about this super fucking obscure meme from like Mexico about a dancing alien. And, uh, his content is unironically really funny now. It's hard to pinpoint like exactly what makes it good. But he puts a video about, about, eh, it puts him out about once a day. You know, so it's a pretty good content drip. If you're not paying attention for a week, you know, you can find whatever you need. He doesn't do video game stuff that much anymore. I think he did a video about that game Agony. Which, that game is just fucking... Alright, Alex, do you know what Agony is? Yeah, it's that game that people only like because of the big tittied monster thing. Exactly. It's, so, do you remember Hatred? My name is not important. Yeah, a game that's designed just to be rated as AO so that everyone makes a big fucking deal out of it. Uh, Get hey, those er, free clickbait. Uh, yeah, clickbaits. Exactly. Everything boils down to getting those fucking use. Everyone just wants attention, Dad. That's what it's all about. Exactly. And the best way to get attention is to leech off of Time Magazine's one of Time Magazine actually had PewDiePie listed as one of the like 100 most influential people since 2000. And like, I agree with that. That's pretty fucking YouTube as a whole isn't it was it was heavily influenced by PewDiePie because of just how he did his shit. And everyone copies it because, oh, fuck, it worked for him. But um. Oh, I lost my train of thought, Alex. My train of Twitch thought. What was I talking about? I had something going that I completely dropped it. I fucking fumbled it. My butterfingers. You were talking about him being influential. Okay, that's literally about... what I was talking about like 10 seconds ago. But what about before that? <laughs> oh, you know. You are talking about... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, let's rechase our sense for a second here. Sorry, I got, got lost in my mind like everything else does. Like everyone's birthday besides my own. <laughs> my birthday, June 17th. Anyway, so... Old PewDiePie is pretty much dead. Now he makes this... It's almost like sketch... It's it, it's a little bit like sketch comedy. I don't know. Nah, maybe no. It's not anything like sketch comedy. Because those involve sketches. Now, Channel Awesome still does really hilarious sketches that aren't... You know, unfortunate. We want to talk about some really, really good content that aged like fucking milk. Channel fucking awesome, dude. I thought that Channel Awesome ended a long time ago. I mean, technically speaking, it did. I mean, look at... uh, So PewDiePie is kind of like a success story of a YouTuber. You know, he he did his whole thing. He had a certain point where he was like, you know what? I'm done doing all this. Uh, I'm done pretending to do all these videos i'm just gonna make my own you know i'm gonna make stuff that entertains me and that's been him since late 2016 you know he's still going strong he's got 63 million he's still doing great good on him he's a fun guy he's he's a good person then there's people like spoonie oh poor spoonster oh my god alec okay for those who don't know hang on 
Channel yeah. Awesome was a um Go ahead, Alex. I was gonna say, I remember what your train of thought was now. Just hit me. Hit me in the fucking back of the head. We we're talking about uh getting attention off YouTube. Oh that's right, that's right. Uh we'll we'll put that on the back burner and hopefully I don't forget it again. Channel Awesome you know, no, no, just fuck that. I'm just going to edit out all the Channel Awesome bullshit and go back to that, because that was what this episode is actually going to be about, instead of going fuck off em. on a tangent. Yeah, fuck them. So, getting back to yous. Now, if you would have told me in 2012 that you wanted to be a journalist, I would have been like, oh, dude, that sounds sick. You know, you can go to journalist school or whatever the fuck. I don't know. Maybe they got a college for to, it. You can go to fucking journalist.com and just get your fucking journalist degree. You know, you can just say, yeah, you know, good on you, man. You're going to report. Now, if you told me in 2018, I'm going to become a journalist, I'd advise you to just go work at like a circus freak tent because that's the exact same job. Your whole job is to get people into that circus tent to look at the weird, freaky, dumb shit that you've got sitting in there. That's your job now as a journalist. Pretty much. I have so little respect for journalism now. I can... As I said before, Alex, you can, can you name me a single person under the age of 45 who actually listens, who actually pays attention to Fox News, New York Times, CNN, any of those? Yes. To, who? And I swear to God, Every- if they're 44. <laughs> no, no, no. I watch ABC at work because there's nothing else on. Exactly. The only times you're exposed to mainstream media news is when you're at a doctor's office. Or you're at fucking the Walmart break room. So, the only people... So, the only people that actively pay attention to mainstream media news are all going to be dead in like 30 years, right? Ouch. So So, here's my theory... And again, I'm going I'm going really hard on the game theory, parenthesis, uh, game theory, end parenthesis, theory, game theory. Now, YouTube has that, has a really good grip on that 15 to 25 demographic, right? I mean, for, for myself, how do I get most of my news? Oh, I'll see a YouTube video by someone that I subscribe to that has something about it. You know, that that's, that's how I get my news. So, it occupies that same kind of space... As Wall Street Journal and all these other websites. Now, Alex, have you ever gone to... Have you ever been on, like, um, on your phone where you don't have ad block on or at a library? Excuse me. At a library or someone else's house. And they don't have ad block. And you go on one of those mainstream websites. They look like something from 1998. Where you've got, like, a shitload of fucking pop-up ads. You've got shit all along the sides. It is disgusting. And why is it disgusting? Because no one reads their fucking newspaper anymore. So the only way you can stay alive is through these goddamn clickbait. If if every person... So, so, here, so, here, so here's your avenues to stay alive as a mainstream news organization now. Number one. Clickbait. Number two. Have enough ads on your website so that you can still try and make real news, which if real news is going to get a lot less views than having, you know, YouTuber superstar PewDiePie dis- you know, dismissed by Disney, that's going to get a lot of views. Having uh, UN Summit dis- uh, agrees to Article 9 of this important blah, 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 blah. That's going to get maybe five views, but... There's enough ads in there that those five U's equal 15 schmeckles, which is enough to keep your fucking thing going for a little bit longer, you know? And so, because they all, these websites all function on this type of, on, on an old ass, no longer viable system for funding their research and funding all their journalists, they have to resort to this. And... Either they're going to die out soon, very soon, or they're going to have to change how they're around. Uh, the website, The Guardian. Uh, there's only two. There's only really two news organizations I pay attention to. The Guardian, I don't actively watch, but if I see an article from The Guardian, I will take it more seriously than if I saw it from Vox or from Vice or something like that. Because The Guardian, they stay afloat the same way Wikipedia does. 
Wikipedia doesn't have any ads. Nothing. It's kept entirely afloat by user donations. The Guardian has subscriptions where it's like five dollars a month. We don't. They don't hide any of their content behind anything like the Wall Street Journal does, where you have to fucking pay a subscription for their shitty website. The Guardian just takes donations to stay afloat. And then the other one I follow is NPR. Now NPR, uh, Alex, you probably know it from that SpongeBob episode where Scrooge says, "You can't fool me. I listen to public radio." <laughs> NPR is um, it's funded. 90% through user don- your listener donations. It's in pretty much every state, at least in the flyover states that make up the majority of central United States. And uh, their news is very unbiased. They uh, Now, if you get into their supplemental programming, it's, v- it, it's very liberal. I'll put it that way. They're very, very liberal into their supplemental programming, but for their actual news reporting... They are very, very fair. They give the facts as is. They don't color them particularly one. They don't, they, they don't color them red. They don't color them blue. They're, here's the info. Here's the facts. There we go. And the reason that they're able to do that is because they don't have to sensationalize. They don't have to, they don't have to generate those fucking U's because they don't rely on each U giving them 15 schmeckles. Now this was a this was actually an issue in the past with journalism, a little thing called yellow journalism. Yellow journalism is defined as using sensationalized titles or eye-catching headlines to gather interest as opposed to the actual co- actual quality or content of the article. Does that sound a little familiar, Alex? It sounds like something that um something that might uh, might still be around there. So, I'm curious. So, if it existed in the past, how did it stop, in finger quotes, in the past? Uh, people got really angry about it, and then it went down for a bit, and then people stopped giving a shit. And now it's back. It's fine. It's fine, Alex. Go well, back. I have a theory. It's fine. it's fine. Don't worry about it. I have a game theory of why it's like this. So, my game theory is... Smartphones and Twitter, every asshole has a built-in camera slash video camera and the means to tell whatever they find to everybody at, in, in, in a snap. News, news people don't need to exist anymore. They've been technologized out. I mean, yeah, that's a pretty strong point. In the past, in the 80s, 90s, even early 2000s, if I wanted to know the news... I had to watch the I had to watch the evening news. I would watch Fox News or ABC or NBC or whatever one of those one of those bullshits. I'd have to watch those to know what the fuck was going on, or read a newspaper or get a magazine. But uh, yeah, no that that's a very uh, that's a very good point. Like I said, I I okay. So YouTube isn't my only source. My other source is Mongolian basket weaving forums. Do you want to know how I kept up with Dragon Ball Super, Alex? I would see a goddamn thread that would say, what are some games in which a bad guy from a previous series teams up with the first one to beat the final boss? Oh, okay, so Frieza teams up with Goku. That's how I get my news, Alex. I get it through people ironically shitposting or from YouTube-related videos. News people are uh, horses and carriages. They're around in finger quotes, but they're no longer the main thing, you know? We don't need them anymore. And it's it's adapt or die, and journalism has its purpose, but I feel like it's kind of been corrupted into just being 100% monetary focused, and maybe, I don't even know if a patron system or a subscriber base can really even work to keep them alive anymore. It might just be one of those things that by the end of our lifetime, Alex, it's not going to be a thing anymore. Or it would have morphed and changed into a whole new fucking thing. Fuck em. <laughs> Good input, Alex. All right, so that was that was a fun episode. Um, PewDiePie is good. Go watch his videos. They're actually high-quality content. Uh, PewDiePie! Part of the Bros Army. Um, I don't... I don't remember the rest of his things. I I haven't watched a PewDiePie video before 2017 since like that Retsu Prey video they did, where they did the 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 Retsu Prey reacts to PewDiePie, where they had a bunch of people from something awful doing goofy shit. 
Uh, that's another one that's... Um, well, we'll probably talk about uh, Spoonie, Retsu Prey, and all those old YouTuber people at some other time. Uh, I feel like that's a topic that's worth talking about. Old YouTubers that... Old YouTubers and content creators that, uh, you know, where are they now? I think that would be a fun episode. But I just wanted to talk about PewDiePie and mainstream news and why it's such a fucking disappointment. And why I look forward to uh, tomorrow's PewDiePie video and the next day. And the next day. And the next day. Well, you know what you could do in the meantime, Alex? You can fit this up. You can... Fuck, let me try that again. Why don't know what you could do in the meantime, Alex? Nailed it. You can visit us on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, on the website, www.lmtya.com, or, let me tell you about .moe, I actually almost lost those domain names because I forgot to charge the Hover.com domain name subscription. I checked again, and let me tell you about .com is still an obscene amount of money, and that guy can go fuck himself. Oh, also on Twitter, at let me tell you PD, I'm not verified. Maybe I should make some ISIS jokes and see if I can get on that. Uh, there's also a Discord in the description. There's a Patreon in the description. And uh, E3 is coming up real soon. Looking forward to that. Uh... And Alex, did I mention already that I was catching CB radio fucking, I, I was trying to test record as a little, I guess, end of episode, good, good stuff for you at the, this morning I was trying to test my audio and I think I was hanging out, I was hanging out in a, a separate discord. We were playing Dragon Ball fighters and it was, I was completely silent on my end cause I was practicing combos and then everyone's like, what the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? And it threw my fucking microphone i shit you not i was picking up trucker cb radios saying like breaker 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 can i get a good stuff breaker breaker central Illinois breaker and it was continued for like two hours where they would just add shit in there there was beeps and all of this started after i posted to discord uh, a bunch of those pictures i took of the weird aliens and Jesus statue, like Jesus framed pictures that I got at work back in like 2014. But, uh, yeah. you're gonna say it started once you started posting pictures of Thanos' dick. I mean, that was that was afterwards. I posted that afterwards. So, yeah, speaking of Thanos' dick, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, next episode should come out pretty soon. I think we've basically got it in the bag already. And, uh... Yeah, the Thanos bag. Is, I, Thanos' I, is dick out. Ah, oh, fuck. I'm trying to think of something funny to say at the end of here. Alex, save me. Uh, I was just gonna say, yeah, yeah the bag. I, I the, the, the episode that we have in the bag. This bag right here. I know exactly what episode you're talking about. Ha ha. Ha ha. See you guys next episode.